it really brought up how we really truly have to focus on our mental health, um, not just in that industry, of course, all industries, but it was brought up very much because it wasn't spoken about at all back then, especially in this industry. So what do we have in store for you in today's conversation? So let me ask you a couple of questions. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt like you just need to play it a little bit bigger to be noticed? Have you ever been around those really extroverted friends that appear to have the edge um, when it comes to engaging with people? Well, today's guest is intimacy, confidence coach and actor, Susie Vestoni. Now, Susie's going to be sharing with us how, by learning some of the techniques from the actor's toolbox and the actor's mind, you or your client's introverted preference uh, can sort of use those techniques really to magnify their true selves without ever feeling like you're acting or performing or putting on a show. And so what we're going to talk about today is how you or your clients can build the confidence to present by understanding how powerful our inward expression can actually be and how that can bring to, to the surface things that will really get you noticed without having to be the loudest. And I certainly have found in my experience, there's a misconception in society out there that confidence is all about being, you know, the, the loudest person in the room. Today is another brilliant coaching conversation. It's going to be packed with information, practical tips, nuggets of inspiration. And so I am so excited to introduce to you the lovely Susie Bastoni. Welcome, Susie. Hello, guys. Hi. Thank you, Sharon, for having me. I'm very excited as well. And there's so many people here. It's really <laughs> lovely to see. So, no, thank you. Thank you. I'm very excited about this today, but also this subject is very close to my heart. So I oh. hope I can share some, some wisdom with you guys. Oh, I cannot wait because when we've had little sort of uh, conversations before, you know, they have always been so insightful and so interesting that I, I think so many people are going to find it helpful today. So yeah. yeah, so I'm looking forward to it too. Good, good, good. So Susie, <laughs> As you probably know, because I know you've uh, listened in on other coaching conversations that we've done in the past, I usually always start asking all my guests about their journey because our stories make us who we are. And so if you don't mind starting right at the beginning about your personal journey and why you chose to train to be a coach. Okay. And this is a very long story, so I'll, I'll cut it. I'll cut it as short as I can. Um, yeah. So I've been an actor for since I was, my goodness, probably about five years old, but officially trained as an actor from um, to oh my goodness when I was seventeen. And it was such a passion from a young age, and so, uh, I felt probably from a very young age that I had that creativity in my bones, I guess, um, all that feeling of wanting to express in that way, because I do believe we've all got different ways of expressing our creativity. That was definitely mine back then. And I spent, I was lucky enough um, with that and very, a lot of hard work, lucky enough to go into West End shows, which I was more of a, a musical theater performer back in those days. Um, a fascinating industry. Uh, there was lots of ups and downs, as you can imagine, over the past 20 years um, with, with this industry and this career. The people that you come across, the different types of personalities, the, 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 the loudness, the, the drama, the jazz hands, all of that stuff, as you can imagine, it is real. And um, I guess from a very young age, without knowing it back then, I was always asking those questions of what where do I fit in here where does my personality fit in what am I comfortable with what am I not comfortable with 
that I've always not known I've been comfortable with. Mm -hmm. So all these questions about different personality types before I ever knew about this kind of stuff and the coaching aspect of of all the models that we can really study to to understand people better to build better relationships with people so going back I spent again 20 years doing all these wonderful wonderful jobs uh, when I was 22 so this was actually at the very start of my career so in 2002 I was doing a wonderful show in Germany called Style I Express. I'm sure a lot of you have, have heard of that show. It was a wonderful show, something I'd watched when I was, my goodness, so, so young and always um, admired those, those types of actors. So I went into that show, it was wonderful. And I happened to have a, um, a bad motorbike accident on the way to work. And it was, it was a game changer for me. I was young, I was fit, alive, um, full of kind of passion for what I was doing. So it did stop me in my tracks, I must say. And it was a game changer to how I viewed the importance, not just of physicality, because being a, 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 also a trained dancer, physicality was very, very important. And, and the, a lot of the focus was on physicality alone it really brought up how we really truly have to focus on our mental health, um, not just in that industry, of course, all industries, but it was brought up very much because it wasn't spoken about at all back then, especially in this industry. So it was something I was very aware of um, from a young age. It, it made me grow up a lot, I would say, um, but also it made me really retreat into myself which in hindsight was, there was, there was definitely pros and cons to that. I, um, it took me a, a lot of time uh, to, in re rehabilitation. Um, and it was something that was a continual growth from then. So that was my first real connection to mental health. So if, um, again, fascinating thoughts and stories over the years from that, but also bringing it back to the subject I will be covering and, and happy to, to share more about what we are going to be doing in the masterclass is the introversion and extroversion preference because I was so unsure over the years of where I laid on that scale. Um, and how I actually got into coaching, just to, to swerve off a little bit, my dad was a coach, so I grew up with that language without knowing what the language was. Um, all those wonderful kind of insightful, challenging questions that we can ask ourselves. And he brought up about the introversion, extroversion years ago. He was um, an effective communication specialist. So he would talk about these kind of things all the time. And I'm sure lots of you have done all the pro uh, personality profiling models that are the very fascinating to, to get really to find yourself within um, and introversion extroversion was something that was just fascinating to me from a young age so that's in short how I started as an actor and how my coaching um, came into the actor's language the actor's way of working and the actor's mind combined now with how we can really truly help ourselves with this coaching language um, as well. Wonderful, really powerful story. And it's interesting, isn't it? You know, you were saying that um, the the motorbike accident was sort of a, a life changing um, experience. Um, and um, it's interesting when many of us have experiences that we we don't realise at the time um, can really present themselves as a gift and or an opportunity. Yeah. Um, at the time, we just think, oh, my goodness, this is like horrendous. And my, you know, my life is never going to be the same again. Retrospectively, it sounds as though I don't know. So forgive me if uh, I, I'm off beam here. But it, it, it sounds as though that life changing event you have reframed into being a, a gift and an opportunity because it has brought you to where you are now. Yeah, you, you couldn't have framed that better. It was <clears throat> it's true. Obviously, we have things that happen to us and that you know those lovely sayings of it's it's what we do with that and over the years without really realizing where my direction was going in terms of this this side of my career um in the coaching sense 
it was very much, I always had this thought, how can I turn what happened? So, you know, in terms of near-death experience, which led to uh, mild depression, which led to PTSD, which led to lots of other things that obviously come off of those things happening, of course. It's how we deal with them and how can I make it some kind of impact with these experiences and, and pass them on, which again is, is what we all do as, as coaches and hopefully find a, a passion, our passion in life to be able to combine our creativity with our business at the same time. So yes, you're absolutely right. It was, it was turning on its head, it head, its head which is again, the true coaching language in terms of how can we reframe this or the NLP language. Mm, wow, really powerful. Now, you mentioned uh, at the beginning uh, that you're um, an intimacy and confidence coach. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we all, I mean, we know that language is subjective, don't we? You know, so what does it actually, what does that actually mean? The intimacy side of things. Yeah. <clears throat> It's it's fascinating. I know we were, we were, I've been speaking to you about this before. It's um it's something that I've added. I've always been a confidence resilience coach because again because of my background that was something that was the passion that I was drawn toward. Now also it, it there was something within the intimacy coaching which in short is finding our love from within to for want of a better word. So it's almost like the the spirituality and the rational brain kind of for me coming together so it's almost like my my for want of a better word woo woo side coming into the 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 coaching language at the same time that go get and coaching language um so for me it's, it's a lot of there are there will be in further in my my development as an intimacy coach there is a lot of work around sexual trauma based um based therapies within there um, on the basic level, it's very much about things I have already cover in terms of the uh, coping with anxiety, how to deal with um, setbacks, how to come back, reframe, like we've spoken about before, and lots of things about knowing thyself. So if we go within, first of all, rather than expecting or wanting continuous outside validation, we do really need to, to go in. And, and to, to tell you another quick, very quick story. So I was speaking to Maria before everyone came on. And the last time I saw everyone from the Coaching Academy in person was 2019. Um, and, I, and then I said to Maria, oh, that, yes. And then I, I buggered off to Brazil for a couple of years. And I did, I happened to go to Brazil um and and came back in 2020 and that was my pause place and it was it was me rediscovering this for want of a better word intimacy side of myself so I was mm -hmm. doing lots of energetic healing work with um a partner out there and it was almost like brought up the things that I knew intuitively but didn't necessarily have the language for back then mm -hmm. I was always a very avid meditator I was a yogi from the day I feel like I was born um very much entwined with maybe my dancing background um but also this this creativity that all these these types of um energetic work can involve so on a basic level there's breath work involved there's um you know somatic shaking whatever you want to call it um I like to I like the rational, the practical side of it as well. Mm -hmm. So there's some fascinating little tools even on a very basic level that one can take from, from these types of practices. And again, as I said, and mixed with that coaching language of really truly allowing someone to be empowered themselves to find what their love, what their passion, what their creativity is, is a match made in heaven in my, my opinion. <laughs> it's interesting isn't it because you know it, it does when you explain it like that it does go hand in hand in, in my head anyway because you know if we if we are going to um you know we are our our first coach anyway so you know if we're if we're going to be coaching others we need to ensure that we've you know we've been coached or we're coaching ourselves as well um in in making sure that we walk our talk but I guess if we're not 
fully confident in who we are so you talk about that intimacy going inwards if we're not really comfortable with our true authentic selves mm. then actually you know we are performing at life to sort of talk about it talk about it in actors terms we're performing at life aren't we rather than living our life we're performing at being maybe who others want us to be rather than being who we truly deserve to be. And, and I guess that's the same for our clients too. Yeah, you're right. I mean, what we co will cover in the masterclass as well and what I love to talk about, which I'll say a little bit about now, is the confidence beneath. Mm. And, and finding, for want of a better word, finding our quiet place in our head, finding our, our grounding, which I, I love that word and hold on to it so dearly. Um, whether say if I was going out to perform and take the the couple of years or quite a few years after the accident that I personally um, experienced and the the ramifications of that accident mentally how I had in built in me without realizing at the time the the tools those actors tools to be able to uh, show confidence when you're not feeling it and there's some real gems to be taken away from that because I'm not by any means suggesting that that's what we should do to, to, to be confident. Although mm -hmm. there is something in that too, in the change of body language, the, the change of our own language. Uh, there's so many beautiful remedies, quick fixes for being able to, to perceive you, uh, others to perceive you as confident. However, obviously the real true thing we really want to do is find that from within. And so it really does take this deep questioning, these um, finding out who we are. And there's a lovely, lovely example, which we go into in a little bit more depth in, in, the, in the masterclass, is character mapping. So as an actor, we, were, we would always have to do a character map. So imagine kind of, um, you know, you, the bub, what they call spider graphs that you, you put, bub, so your character be there, whatever it were, Mary Delgado. Um, and then you'd obviously put, what, what does she love, um, love to eat? What does she love to do? What are her favorite phrases? What language does, she, what other language does she speak? Who are her best friends? What makes her laugh? Where does her humor come from? Where's her sadness lay? And what experiences has she had in her life to come to this point where she's actually acting like this? All these fascinating questions that therefore we can ask ourselves on a daily or regular basis to really come to the sense of knowing who we are. And the reason why this is fascinating, this, this introversion, extroversion um, subject that we will be covering is because I guess, I guess what, we, what would be important to say right now is the, the difference between the, the debunking the myth, I guess, like we, you said at the beginning of the introversion, extroversion preference. We need to stop assuming that loud is strong and quiet is weak. Mm -hmm. And back at my, so even that sentence brings back kind of stories of my drama school days when I would be in the atrium of this, this amazing college that I went to. And I would be the one just sitting back and observing everyone in hindsight with nerves and with anxiety, but everyone be, so, not everyone, a lot of people, should I say, were so loud and so in your face. And I was at that time really, truly um, very insecure about that. I was, I was intimidated by those types of behavior. Now, over the years and in hindsight and probably even at the time I was I was very I had an inner confidence that um, I wish I had grasped onto more but I had a, a real grounding I had I had my roots I, I knew who I was mm -hmm. however this um, this want for extroversion in, in some people's minds was to me intimidating at the time because it was just loud. I did realize over time, of course, yeah. that those that were being loud had nothing to do with their confidence. Mm -hmm. They were sometimes complete opposite. They were actually not confident at all or had a lower self-esteem that they felt they had to be that way. Mm -hmm. So just debunking that myth, the fact of introversion, extroversion, and the way I love to, to view it is that it's simply where we get our energy from. 
So there are a lot of people that need to express outwards at the extreme level of extroversion um, in particular. And a lot of people at the extreme end of the introversion preference need to go within to find their answers. And there are such huge benefits to both. I have met, there's, there's this myth also that a lot of actors are all extroverts. And on the contrary, I mean, I've met the most beautiful um, actors who are highly introverted and they, I just want to listen to them more. Yeah. And I, the, the benefits to being an introvert and if what, that's what we've got to realize is, is how people listen to you a, a, a lot more, perhaps. Um, how they're more engaged because they know you're going to be thinking about what you're saying. Uh, often introverts tend to respond rather than react. Mm. So there's so many beautiful things about this. I've forgotten the original question. I, I tend to do this, guys. I do go <laughs> off on one. <laughs> it's fine because you're beautiful to listen to. So it's fine, Susie. Right. I mean, there's just so much there, so much rich mm. content there. Mm. One, one thing that um, I did pick up on is when you were talking about sort of what, what people assume, there were two things really that came to mind. And I think, um, and you know, perhaps you could let me know if, if you'd agree, that society has almost taught us that um, to be successful, um, it's only those loud, in your face type, you know, I don't know, the Gordon Ramses of the world, you know, that type of thing. You've got to be out there, you've got to be go get it, you know, that type of stuff. And almost certainly in, in, in my experience and the clients that I've worked with over the years, there's almost this sort of, um, well, here you go. See what, see what you think about this. The word shy is a word that I think, tell me if you, you agree, that I think that extroverts have created to explain an introvert preference, but it's become a negative connotation as opposed to celebrating an introversion preference. Absolutely agree. <clears throat> the word shy, I do believe, should be taken out in, con in this context to, uh, to uh, our vocabulary to do with introverts at all, because it's not, it's, it's not, it's an entirely different subject. Yeah. So you may have a really shy in extrovert um, who, is lacking confidence who has a very low self-esteem. You may have a, a, an introvert that has really high confidence and very high self-esteem. Uh, so yeah, that word shy, I do feel has been coined to do with introversion. Mm -hmm. And this is why I love, again, debunking the, the, the myths surrounding the, the actual true um, definition of introversion and extroversion. Um, again, simply where we get our energy from. And then that, again, does come into this loud and, and the quiet. Um, I know lots of quite loud vocally introverts also. <laughs> when, they, when they know what they're saying, when they found their, when they are in a confident state. Um, so it's, um, and again, we will bring this back in, in the masterclass and it will be a lot more detailed, by the way, I won't be going off, off like this. Um, within the masterclass however the the beautiful which which the middleman as as it were or woman um the ambivert so if you're in the middle of this scale as well which I do believe these days I possibly have found myself there which potentially is why I found it very confusing over the years yeah. for understanding the 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 scales and the differences between behaviors coming from where our energy lies Fantastic. It's just fascinating. I just love the whole sort of introversion, extroversion thing. So you know, perhaps you'll expand on that a little bit more as we go through. One of the things you, you have mentioned is, is how important it is to speak from the heart. Tell, tell me why you think that's really important in this context. Or just generally, actually. <laughs> yeah, generally as well. But yeah, yeah. Bringing it back to this context. I mean, I do believe that so I'm, I'm uh, half my Italian, a Sicilian, should I say, is my, my background. So I have, so let's say I'm very gestures, I'm very um, passionate again. And you find with lots of Italians um, as, a, as a stereotype that they use gestures a lot. So I'm just giving this as an example. Um, 
And the reason for that being is one of my Ita very, uh, Italian, very good friends said, it's because we're so passionate, it's because we're so creative and we're so, again, passionate comes at that, that word again. And it's, I kind of went, there is some real truth to that. So in terms of going back to the, why it's so important to speak from the heart and let's relate this to business and our own business for, for now for this context is that if we find our passion, then surely it's going to be coming from our heart. Then surely it's going to be showing in our bodies. It's going to, our body language will be conveying that we're very passionate and that we're very, um, our creativity is, is being, passed around the room because we're so passionate about a subject or a niche or what we what we're saying so in the masterclass we'll talk a lot about scripts I would, uh, scripts from the heart because if there is something that we don't care about very much we really need to be acting to be able to show to show that like you were saying at the beginning sometimes we you know we're acting for the world rather than what we're wanting to be and again, you don't be needing to be giving all these gestures. You don't need to be Sicilian to, to be showing this passion. However, this is why I love the, the way of explaining this, just to magnify our true selves rather than be putting on a show. Because just in actors actually find it, say if someone's in an acting class and they're having to sing a song, if they're not really feeling and knowing the words and what they mean to them, then they'll just be standing there. And it, some actors go, oh, I better put a, an arm in there or I better do a head movement because I need to be moving. If it doesn't come from your heart, yes. then it's just going to come across so inauthentic. So coming from the heart is um, something that I'm very passionate about, people really truly finding themselves and their passion previous to um to anything they're going to be doing because we're wanting also then therefore to feel proud of what we're doing and look back and go yes I really meant that I was being really real and I connected the, to those people because that and they could feel it because they feel it too perhaps mm. and that to me is connection and belonging as coaches um, people that are already coaches on this call you you'd know that we we're not meant for everyone and that's okay yeah. but however that connection that belonging comes from connecting with people and from a passion that you you share together Mm, so powerful and, and I think you're absolutely right in saying you know um, coaching isn't a one-size-fits-all when we're not meant for everyone and not everyone is meant for us and mm. I think sometimes perhaps if we you know if we're not feeling confident about who we really are then perhaps we try and be all things to all people but I guess what you're saying is if we are speaking from the heart if we are doing and showing our passion and we're showing up in that way mm. well actually even if we have an introverted preference we're going to be um displaying presenting engaging in a way that actually is, is truly magnetic and comes across as being very confident yeah absolutely if you're showing authenticity confidence does show through that and there's this lovely acronym hail maybe some people have, have heard of hail um so honesty authenticity integrity and love and if we've got those four things combined they are the um you know four ways of being very effectively uh, communicative and so if you've got those four things combined and, I, and by love i don't mean in the romantic sense of course but in the sense of showing up with with the feeling of I'm, I'm wanting to to show love or give love in terms of what I am going to be presenting to people and how they can actually benefit from what I'll be sharing mm, so, is that sort of yeah. coaching service heart really isn't it yeah, yeah. Uh, yes absolutely you know that it, yeah was it was it was it might have been Simon yesterday saying the US the USP instead of the unique selling point it's the unique serving point and it's yeah. it's true and we need to again find that within ourselves if we're delivering things that we we're not happy with or we don't care about we're not going to feel very confident about that mm -hmm. and so finding our passion first 
is everything to do with building our confidence very, very slowly, of course, at times, or that can happen very quickly when you go, yes, I nailed it, yeah. or I found what I love doing. Our energy grows, therefore, so we feel, obviously, we can be putting our, our passions into the, the right people, into the right place for us. Mm, fantastic so that you know I know that you've got loads and loads of sort of different sort of techniques and tips and things that you're going to be sharing um and you're going to be sharing one I know later on uh, as a tip sort of a takeaway uh, sort of tip um and it sort of um, occurred to me when you when you were sort of sharing and in your passion and you know sort of talking about you know showing up authentically and when we were talking before we came on uh, live, um, a Jay Shetty quote, which um, was always been mind blowing to me, but it's so relevant to what we're talking about today, Susie. So uh, what Jay said is, um, I am not who I think I am. And I am not who you think I am. I am what you think no, what I think you think I am. So I'll say that again. I am not who you think I am. I am not who I think I am. I am what I think you think I am. So that's yeah. quite a <laughs> mind-blowing thing, right? But that's Jay Shetty for you, isn't it? But it, you know, it, but it is so profound in what we're talking about today because as you were saying, if we if we're not able to show up truly then we can't step into who we truly are and we can't leave all of that baggage behind around I need to show up in this way I need to be this person I need to achieve this goal for that person it's about living living uh, living our own lives it's very very true and I love that quite and again it's a you have to get your head around it don't you for a second <laughs> it's, it's, so, it's, it's so true and I love that and it, it I love things that make make you think and it, it's so true. I mean, I even it takes me back again to that atrium in college going, yeah. and the thought, the thoughts of going, oh my God, am I, am I not going to be confident enough or, or what I'm supposed to be to be shine how I'm supposed to do yeah, on, on yeah. the stage? Or, and, but then again, and it comes back to our thoughts of what other people are thinking yeah. and that, how that can, in fact, knock our confidence. I mean, the, the amount of times I've had to walk into a casting suite or, or an audition pretending I was confident mm. or had oodles of confidence without being again without I it took me years to realize that I can just be myself in that room mm. and that those people are uh just normal people mm. actually that's not true they're not no 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 <laughs> need to fear to panel anymore don't, don't tell them I said that is there anything that's normal in acting I don't know whatever it is in the acting, acting profession no there's lots of other things I could say about the acting world too I'll refrain <laughs> from another conversation yeah. <laughs> so, so you're going to be delivering a brilliant masterclass for us and, and I know it sort of runs on, on sort of two levels really so it will be um, suitable for somebody who is just interested in, in the topic but it's going to be very very interactive uh, you know from, from what you you've sort of explained to me before it's it's all I know it's going to be really playful I know there's going to be lots of fun in it and it's going to be to say um a lot of growth within that so people will you know won't come out the same as they went in in a very positive way yeah. so tell us a little bit more about what people can expect um from doing this wonderful masterclass with you Mm. I'm I'm so excited again as, as I know I'm sure I've expressed enough how passionate I am about this subject so I'm hoping that um, people really truly take mm. that will take that away from the, uh, with them and you're right in the terms when you said how playful um, I'm really wanting it to be that way and it will be a group where we can all feel like we are um, together so it's a it's a safe space for want of a better phrase to be able to explore different sides of ourselves um, to be able to find what our own um, way of magnifying ourselves are. So there will be a Facebook group previous as well, which um, I know you, you'll, you'll probably mention more about um, just for the week running. So I can be sharing ideas because it's such a vast subject and so many different ideas and, and practical tools that we can't 
potentially fit them all into the three and a half hours. But um, there is enough in there that you can take away to be able to really realize what it is to be practicing to be yourself first. So we will be talking again about the introversion, extroversion. There'll be lots of chat box. There'll be lots of live chats. There will be lots of breakout rooms so that you can discuss with each other. Um, and there'll be some kind of, um, if people are willing, so willing participants to practice a script. So I would have asked like a week before that they would be even 60 seconds of having something that you, you know um, that you can deliver even if you don't end up delivering it within the group that you can deliver about something you're passionate about for instance but this will all be explained previously and then um, there'll be performance of willing participants we'll be talking about uh, body language um, how we can change our body language and what is effective and again we can do this very effectively even on zoom um, to be able to kind of give examples and, and, and advice in that way. Uh, we'll be talking more about what actors do vocally. We'll be doing some lovely vocal exercises and the importance of voice, tone, pace, inclinations in our voice, whether we're presenting on a stage or doing a Zoom call or even having a conversation with someone that we want to be really effective with, uh, our clients for instance, we know we, we learn as coaches and continue to practice the, the active listening side, the, the paraphrasing, the feeding back, and also having similar language to our clients and how important that is. So it's almost like um, you learn learning techniques of, of uh, for want of a better word, persuasion um, in the positive sense and the that rapport that can be built very quickly with these types of things so all of these techniques and all of these practical tools can be taken into other aspects of your life as well so there will be it's not just about becoming um, a better presenter it's 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 truly from both ends of the scale of who you are learning more about that and then how you can magnify that for your business as well wonderful it sounds amazing so um do I have to be an introvert to come? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just want someone might be thinking that question. No. So it sort of sounds like, as I say, there, there's lots there. So it, it could be somebody who uh, maybe is about to, I don't know, deliver um, a pitch to somebody on, on a piece of work and they could, you know, maybe practice that type of thing. Or it might be um, just giving their elevator pitch or, you know, it, so it sounds like that, that, that these are techniques that people will be able to use and or practice and bring along to that workshop that they can literally use and take away straight away and, and change the way that they are interacting with, 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 with people and events. Yeah, absolutely. This is for, for everyone and anyone in this sense, in terms of whatever preference you lay with. I just uh, really wanted to, to highlight that, the, the introversion, extroversion on mm. this. So, um, uh, and, and, and the differences with that. And so it's going to, yeah, lots of different ways that you can take these tools and use them for how you, you're going to use them. And again, presentation skills, effective communication is something I've studied quite deeply on the other side of my intimacy stuff with the coaching um, for years. So it's something that is, is so relevant to a lot of what we have to do, whether that's, again, speaking on one-to-one -one or in a group whether that's uh, live or, or online. And so it's, it, it, yes, definitely, definitely things that people can take away uh, with them and, and implement into their daily conversations and communication even. Wonderful. Gosh, it sounds like there's just so much that is going to be helpful and useful, regardless of wherever we are on our journey, whether it's for us personally or whether we need some techniques to support our clients going forward. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. So... I usually it's sort of got us about 10 minutes before the end. And um, as I say, there's, there's just loads more that I'd like to dive into. I know you've, you've mentioned to me that you, you know, you're going to share um, a five sort of question formula. Um, we might not necessarily have time for that today. Um, so maybe you can think of maybe another tip or, or 
useful tool that you can share to everybody listening that they can use maybe in their own lives or in their coaching business? Yeah, again, there's so, so many, so many. Um, I was going to share the, um, yeah, the five, um, your who and do what statement, but your, your purpose statement as such, but different questions and ideas to who you are truly beneath that. That will be in the, the Facebook book group previous to that because it does go into a little bit more depth, especially for time allowance for today. Um, I'm sure, now I'm just wanting to give a really very simple, basic example of something that we can build upon. And I'm sure a lot of you in, in this room in particular have heard of Amy Cuddy. Um, I don't know if some people put their hands up or I see some, see some nods. Um, and the, the power poses, the, the, the postural differences that we can make. And actually how scientifically this can change our brain. Um, to be to be believing that we're more confident so there's two sides to this isn't there we want to be more confident initially however how can we actually help ourselves by having these postural differences so today and a lot of you have probably seen her um her oh gosh i've forgotten the actual um the TED, TED talks talk. she does. Yeah. Her TED talks. they're fascinating but for me they really truly going into more depth with those they are it's fascinating because it does relate to body mind connection and how even whichever side we're coming from how we can truly take something from that so today what I'd, I'd love it if everyone and again because this is getting in the mood for the the playfulness of the masterclass if you're willing and again you can always do this with your camera off by the way so there's an ever not ever any pressure to be um exposing yourself um too too much in this way but i'm gonna have to do it because i'm the, i'm presenting it so uh um i will be setting an example but today i'd love us just all whether you want to stand up or just sit up in your chair and feel a little bit more uh, posturally straight and i would love us i'm going to just wanting to do the two minute power pose and so for me, I love to do the general one that she, she always does with hands on the hip. Um, I also do this in yoga practice, for instance, every time I'm, I'm reaching up, I'm doing a power pose because my chest is open, my throat is open. I've got more of an expression in my body, therefore. But I'm just wanting us to do this for literally, we'll just do probably one minute because um, uh, you can go away and do this for yourself. My question here also is that we all know these things and I'm party to this as well. Um, we all know these things, but how often do we actually implement them? <laughs> Even as coaches, how often do we actually follow through and do these on a daily basis to actually change our way of being? So I really uh, invite you to, to take this away with you um, in terms of when will you do this? Let's get the coaching language in. When will you do this? How often will you do this? And how will you record how this really truly is going to be changing your life, even in the tiniest little bit of way? So I'd love us to do it now. So stand in that power pose. I'm going to stand up. Actually, this might Me too. Out. Me too. I'm going to stand up. Why, why not? Um, and whilst we're doing this... Ooh, I hope I just realized I'm glad I wasn't wearing my jogging bottoms then. <laughs> so I'm going to stand up. I'm going to be standing in this pose. You can stand with your hand on your stomach, your heart, your chest, wherever you feel very powerful. And this is going into the two minutes now. So I'm going to keep talking just to make it less awkward. And I'm wanting you to feel how this feels standing in this position for a moment and just have a moment of silence with your own thoughts. So your shoulders back, your shoulders down, your chest lifted. What's happening in your body? Do you want to move around at all? And now to go with this, I would love you to just do some breathing exercises. This is what we will do, be doing a lot of in the masterclass. I want you to breathe in for three and out for six. Breathe in for three and out for six. Couple more breaths in in your own time. 
keep that power pose nice and strong. Feel yourself coming back to calm, but empowering state. moment of silence for yourself, for your worth, and for your self-belief. Okay, well done. <laughs> Come back to the room. <laughs> Just went into meditation state. Very simple. How often do we implement this? This is the main reason for doing this. And again, scientifically proven. And yes, um, in the chat says, fake it if you make it. Thank you. Great TED talk. And she does so many others as well. And it's proven that obviously within those two minutes, our cortisol level drops by something like 20%. Our, um, our testosterone level raises by 22% or something. Therefore, by 30%, we're more likely to follow through on what we're wanting to achieve. And those tiny little tricks, they're simple, so let's implement them. Yeah, incredible. And it's really interesting, actually, Susie, because it's often the simple things that we, we dismiss or we push to one side and think, oh, I know all of this stuff. And, you know, um, those people that know me, you know, I qualified back in 2009. And, you know, there was part of my journey you know, in, in, from then till now, where I know, and I'm going to be honest and open now, where I would have thought, I know all this stuff, I know all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, the longer I've gone in in my journey, mm -hmm. of be like 13 years of being a coach, I don't think, I'm, I'm, I guess that all comes back to the whole transactional analysis stuff and working on yourself and ego and all of that stuff. But I don't think that anymore because I think it's so important for us to have that open mind in thinking it's the simple stuff that we miss, isn't it? And it they're the most really important is. things. They're the things, you know, that it, that's the holy grail, the, the, the simple, effective habits that we do daily that move us forward. Yeah. You know, absolutely. rather than trying to search for that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, the pot of gold is there. We've got it every day. And we need to be reminded of that to do that every day. Okay. The other thing I love about all of this, Susie, is there is so many parallels between you and Amy Cuddy in mm -hmm. as much as, you know, you might, you know, the accident life-changing accident there's just so much there which is why I you know I know how you know passionate you are and authentic you are in everything that you do oh. um, it's been an absolute pleasure I've loved thank it you. Um, thank you so much remember to like comment and subscribe to this channel for more content like this and if you're interested in finding out more about becoming a life coach, you can attend one of our free Introduction to Life Coaching webinars. A link to that is in the description below.